Hello and welcome to this tutorial from Profoto Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in this video I'll be showing you how to create guides inside of Affinity Photo and I'll be showing you how to create both types of guides. So there are two guides. There are the ruler guides and the column guides. Let's start off here by opening up a new document inside of Affinity so I can come over here and click new document. And in this case, I'll just go with 1920 by 1080 for my dimensions under the layout tab here, the layout section and come over here and click create. So here I have my document and you'll notice my document in particular has rulers going around the edges. So I have a vertical set of rulers and a horizontal set of rulers. If you don't see these rulers, you can hit control R or command R on your keyboard, or you can go to view, show rulers, and that will display the rulers around your document. As I mentioned, there are two types of guides inside of Affinity Photo. The first type is going to be your ruler guides. These are guides that you create directly from your rulers, hence the name, but they show up directly on your canvas or your document, and they basically just allow you to align objects or snap objects to those guides. So the first way to create a ruler guide is to come over here and grab the move tool from my toolbox. Once I have my move tool, I can either drag from the horizontal or the vertical guide. So what I have to do is click and hold while I'm over the ruler and then click and drag this down. And so now that's going to create, in this case, a horizontal guide because I clicked and dragged from the X axis, which is the horizontal ruler. So as I drag my mouse on top of the document, you'll see a guide will now follow my mouse pointer and it's giving the exact location just above the cursor and to the right. In this case, I'm working in pixels, so if I drop it right here, I'm at 378 pixels. And the same applies if I were to create a vertical guide, so that's going to be clicking and dragging from the left ruler, and there you'll see I now have a vertical guide. And just above the cursor to the right is going to be another measurement to tell me exactly where I am. So the downside of this is it can be hard to drop this to the pixel. So in other words, if I need to drop this at 902 pixels, you'll see it's sort of jumping between 901 and 903. So let me release this. And actually I'll hover my mouse over this again. You can always tell when you are hovered over the guide because you'll have this double-sided arrow. And then I can just click and drag this off of the document and that will delete that. So let me just click and drag this. So right now we're at 392. Let's say we want this to be 393. That's going to bring me to the second method for creating ruler guides, and that is going to be using the guides manager. So the benefit of this, even though it does take an extra step, is that it's going to allow you to more precisely place your guides, among other benefits. So let's check that out by going to view guides manager. And by the way, if you don't see any guides here, you may need to go to view, show guides, and that will turn your guides on. But here you'll see this is actually the first horizontal guide we placed. So this is at 392. So this area of the guides manager is going to manage your ruler guides. We'll get to the right side in a bit. But here I can actually double click on this value here and then type in, for example, if I wanted to be really precise and go with 393, hit the enter key, and that will automatically adjust this. You couldn't really tell this moved because it was only a one or two pixel difference, but let me demonstrate. So if I double click and go with a larger value like 750 and hit the enter key, you'll see that will reposition my horizontal guide. So you don't need to type the pixels here when you are changing this value. All you need to do is type the number and Affinity Photo will automatically add the units there to the end. And I can also come down here to the bottom and create a new guide if I wanted to. So when I click on here, you'll see it'll automatically add a guide at the halfway point. So in this case, because my image is 1920 by 1080, the halfway point, horizontally speaking, is 540. So that's going to be half of the height. And of course, as I just mentioned, if I wanted to change the value of this, double click on here, type a new value, we'll go with 200, and hit the enter key, and that will change the position of that guy to 200. If I wanted to delete these guides, I can come over here and just simply click this little trash can icon. You do need to make sure that you're clicked on the actual guide first so that it is the active guide, and then you can come over here and delete it. 
So the same applies to the vertical guides. I can click on here to create one. So in this case, because the image is 1920 pixels wide, the halfway point is gonna be 960 pixels. And let me create a second guide here. If I wanted to, I can change the position of the second guide, hit the enter key, and now we have a second guide at 1200 pixels. Below the horizontal and vertical guides columns is going to be the remove all guides button. So this just allows you to one click remove all the guides on here. So let's say I have three guides right now. If I click remove all guides, now all of those guides have disappeared. And finally to the right of that we have percent. So when this option is checked, we're no longer working in pixels. So for example, let me create a new horizontal guide. And instead of this saying 540 pixels, this is saying 50% because remember 540 pixels is exactly half of the height of our image, which is 1080 pixels. So 540 pixels translates to 50%. If I were to uncheck the percent option, you'll see that will automatically translate that back to pixels. So we can sort of toggle between pixels and percent depending on which one we want to use. So let me delete this horizontal guide. So now that we're done with the ruler guides, let's move on to the column guides. That is the second type of guide found in Affinity Photo. So column guides are more so used for things like layouts. Maybe you're designing a web page or a magazine and you need to have certain cells and spacing between those cells so that you can place designs inside of those areas and also leave room for any designs that may be adjacent. So again, this is very common with things like web design as well as app design, and there are many other use cases for this. But the way column guides are gonna work here by default is it's just going to say one column and one row. So you're not gonna see anything going on on the document. However, if I were to increase the number of columns here to two, now you'll see that's going to change the makeup of this. So let me move this out of the way, the guides manager. So here you'll see now our image is divided up into two columns. So columns are gonna be going vertically, whereas rows will be going horizontally, so left to right, whereas columns are going up and down. So let's dissect what's going on here. We have two columns, one column on the left, one on the right, and it's being separated by this vertical line. This vertical line is called the gutter. So you'll see below the columns and the rows, you have your gutter and the value that you have set here is going to be the width of the gutter. A gutter, technically speaking, is just the space between columns or rows. So if I were to decrease the gutter width to something like 50, you'll see that will shrink the spacing between the columns. And if I were to increase this to 150, that would increase that spacing. So let's bring this back to 100. And let's also come over here to rows. So if I were to add another row to this, right now there's only one row. Let's go with two rows. All of a sudden we have this gutter here separating the top row from the bottom row. So the rows are going from left to right. And because we still have two columns, we have this vertical gutter as well. That's going to give us four equal cells here. And so these column guides can help tell us, for example, that all of our designs need to be inside of these cell areas. And if any of the designs go inside of the gutter area, maybe they'll get cut off, or maybe the spacing will just look bad and it won't follow a brand's best practices for graphic design. That's just another example. But you can see here, I can just continue increasing these values. So if we have three columns, all of a sudden we have two gutters or two vertical lines going through here. And same thing applies with rows. I can just continue increasing this with however many rows I need. And I can, of course, make adjustments to the gutter width if I need to decrease the amount of spacing there. So let's revert this back to something more simple. Let's go with three columns and two rows. So the next option here is the style dropdown. Right now this is set to filled, which means each of the cells is going to be filled in with the specified color, which is this color right here. I can always change the color of this. So for example, I can go with a greenish color or a bluish color, purple, red, whatever. Whatever I wanna change the color to on here, I can change it to. I'm just gonna keep this set to the default, which is 129 for all of these. That's just basically a middle gray color. But I can change the style here. So instead of having these filled in, I can change this to outline. And what that's going to do is create these lines at the gutters and the lines intersect. And these are just another way of telling you that this is the gutter area. So for example, maybe you don't want your designs going inside that area. It's just a different aesthetic for displaying those gutters. 
So let's change this back to filled. I like that better. So all of that was inside of the column guides section. Below the column guides is the margins. So this allows you to create spacing around the edge of your document. So the gutter is going to be between cells, whereas the margins is going to basically be between documents. So for example, I can add spacing to the left, right, top, or bottom portions of my document, and I can have all of them be different or have them all be the same. But you'll see here, for example, if I add a 100 pixel margin to the left side, and let me hit the Enter key, now we have this 100 pixel space on the left side of the document. And the margin is going to end with this blue highlighted line here. It's basically like a guide. And so if I wanted to add an equal margin to the right side, I can type 100. And now we have a margin on the right. And if I wanted to have something different, so let's say I wanted 25 for the top and 25 for the bottom. Now you can see we have a 25 pixel margin on the top and bottom and a 100 pixel margin on the left and right. And you'll see that that blue highlighted line, that blue guide is going all the way around the document now. And this just provides an easy way to create layouts because now you know to stay out of the margins and to stay out of the gutter areas. And if you're working with columns and rows, keep all your designs inside of what I call the cells. So the final option here is the spread origin. This is just the point at which your rulers start. So the rulers by default start counting at zero right at the corner of the document, the top left corner. If for whatever reason you wanted to change the origin at which the zero starts. So for example, let's say you wanted the counting to start at the margins here. You can come over to the spread origin and change this. So for example, we'll go with 100 for the X. Hit the tab key and because our margin here is 25, let's change the Y to 25. And usually this doesn't update by itself for some reason. What I find works is holding the control key and zooming in with my mouse wheel and then zooming out. So now if I come over here, you'll see the zero doesn't actually start counting until the margin. And that's gonna be at 100 pixels going from left to right. And then down here, the zero starts at this margin or at least it should. Let me come over here, I have to apply this change. And again, I usually zoom in and out. So now you'll see here that the zero actually starts 25 pixels down, which is right at the start of this margin or right at the end of this margin and the start of the rest of the document. And so that's what the spread origin is used for. Let me reset this back to zero. And I can also just reset all these values back to zero. If I wanted to get rid of the column guides, all I have to do is decrease these values back to one. So I'll put the columns down to one and then the rows down to one, and that will totally get rid of all the column guides. If I did want to keep some of the guides, so let's just increase this back to three for the columns and two for the rows. All I have to do is either exit out of here using the X or click close, and that will allow me to keep this. And if I ever need to go back and either adjust these or erase these, I'll go to view, guides manager, and I can make my adjustments once again and exit out. All right, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also check out my website at profotovector.com. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.